Hey, what's going on YouTube? Chris back with another video. Today we're going to be going over the new Android Pie Beta 1 for the OnePlus 6. If you guys are interested in picking up a OnePlus 6, there's going to be a $20 coupon code in the link down in the description. So you can get $20 off your OnePlus 6 purchase. And that would also support me as well as help you. I flashed this about two days ago back on Monday when it was released and I've been using it ever since as my daily driver. So I'm going to go over sharing some of the new features, uh, some issues I've been running into, and kind of sharing it all with you here, my first honest experience. So as we in, as we know, it is based on Android Pie, which is great. Um, this has already been out for developer preview since Google I.O. You need to download the, the OTA for the beta one and place it into the, the directory where your internal storage lies. So basically you'd be pasting it here in this section. And then if you go over to your system update, tap on this cog and then local update, it'll reside right here. You can select on that. It'll work on installing, it'll reboot. It'll take a couple minutes longer to do the initial boot. Um, so no need to worry there. But as you can already see, the settings layout has changed from Oreo. So I was expecting it to look more uh, pixel or stock Android like, um, but these icons kind of resemble that of Material Design 2 and Google's new uh, UI layout. The settings has uh, changed in, in regards to layout, but we'll go over and go into some of these new settings here. If we go under display, we still have your notch display, nothing has changed there. But here in the theme section, we do have a new colorful, colorful theme which also does disable the accent color, which we'll get into in just a minute. So now if we go back, each of these settings has a, a different color, but at the same time, the dark mode here in the quick toggles is now dark versus light. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if it's supposed to be that way, but it definitely doesn't go together. It kind of uh, seems a little off there. But if we go back, we can see accent color is now disabled. If we go, we still have our light and dark mode. As always, nothing has changed there. The wonderful thing we now have is the ability to completely customize whatever color we want for the accent color. So we have this entire color splotch, as you can see, or you can actually copy and paste a specific hex code um, down here if you want something more specific, or you can actually get a live preview of what the accent would look like. We also do get more stock color options here as well to choose from. Something I did notice after updating to Pi, uh, my status bar um, settings pretty much reset. It showed all the status bar icons that were normally there. Um, and it looks like that is the case after a reboot as well, because um, I normally turn off um, the alarm section and then the voice over LTE, Wi-Fi, NFC, and volume icons as well. Um, so nothing has changed there either. You do, of course, still have the time on the left-hand side, which has been present since, uh, since Oreo. So if we go down over to buttons and gestures, uh, we do now have the ability to uh, modify the alert slider and the do not disturb. So that's more customizable and it works properly with the do not disturb of Android. If we go into navigation gestures, we do have now Android Pie gestures, which can be found on the pixel, as we can see there. Quickly clear with now a button at the bottom, whereas before on the pixel, you have to scroll all the way to the left to click on clear all. But now we have a very big, large, easy, and convenient clear all button below the preview of your recents menu, which is nice. You also still get, of course, the stock navigation buttons if you so choose, or the OnePlus gestures, which also were present in Oreo as well with the OnePlus 6. Some of these settings we've already seen with the beta for OnePlus 5 and 5T, but now since it's on Pi, um, this is great that this is coming to the OnePlus 6. Under battery, we also have the adaptive battery that you can turn on to help improve battery life, which actually does help. Um, you can definitely see a considerable difference. Battery life has been okay. Um, I'm sure there's definitely still works and kinks that need to be worked out there. Um, but I did notice when you're asleep, there's this new like sleep mode.
basically it disables data and background services and things like that to help get a more um, stable and a lot longer um, sleep when it goes into doze and things like that. Um, but at the moment, we're at an hour a screen on time. We're at 76%. I do leave GPS and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on at all times, but your mileage may vary as well. We also do get a new gaming mode, basically gaming mode 3.0, that allows for uh, notifications for third-party calls, um, such as voice or video calls from social apps, such as Duo, things like that. So you can um, set those settings appropriately. And then when you go into a game, actually, there's a new dialog box that comes up here. I'll show you. So there's this new gaming mode um, box that you can always hide if you so choose. And it gives you the options to change these settings right here conveniently before you go into your game. And then here's that recents menu once again. So it's fluid, it's smooth. And then up here we have this three little menu dots icon, which you can tap on to go into split screen, which isn't there on the pixel, or go into full full mode if you so choose. And then the gestures, you still have the gestures down here to switch between the different apps. But I did notice though, if we open a couple of these apps here real quick, and... You still get the vibration, but there is a little bit of like lagginess between this. And I noticed that when I'm wanting to switch between apps quickly with a swipe toggle, like some of the animations of this little bar of the pill aren't really present. Um, things like that. But overall, it is stable. Now there are a few things that don't work. Google Pay doesn't work. Um, I just also tried it this morning, doesn't work. That's because it is running beta build, so keep that in mind if that is something you use on a daily basis. Um, another thing you might get an error is Google Play may show that the device isn't authorized or something like that. That might be an error. Um, so I haven't had any issues with that. Um, I've been able to install and update apps perfectly fine, and I've been pretty happy with it so far. I am using the, the Pixel Launcher, but everything is running smooth. The icons, the quick toggles now are updated to Android Pie. Fortunately, we still don't have the uh, brightness slider here. You have to swipe down again, of course, to get that access. If we go down here to About Phone, go to Android version, we can see it is Android 9, and it's actually running September Security Patch. So this came out before Google did with yesterday's uh, September Security Patch release for Pixel devices and Essential also, so OnePlus actually beat them to the punch in that regard. So a lot of new UI changes, um, the icons and things like that have been updated to Material Design 2 um, with kind of those non-fill type icons. So if we go to the settings, you can see like the icons have been updated. The UI for the phone has also been changed and updated. Um, so now you have equally spaced sections for up here for speed dial call history contacts and there's also a voicemail section before these sections were congested in just part of the screen but now they're equally spaced and there is a new ui for the contacts um, so contacts that so now contacts that don't have a photo have a little new animation sort of thing here that pop up so we can see that once more you can see there's a new little animation there the in-call dialer theme is still black, so when you're on a phone call, it's still completely black. I would think if you're using a white theme or light theme, that would be updated to white as well, but it's not, unfortunately. Um, there's been other optimizations, other little improvements here and there, things like that. I've had weird issues with Bluetooth, where sometimes when um, GPS directions and music are playing, uh, sometimes the volume would get really dim and then it doesn't really turn back up and vice versa, sometimes it gets really loud and then turning it down and then it has this weird opposite effect at that point. The camera layout has also changed here. Um, we can see the icons have changed slightly as well to update with that new Pi theme. Um, the new HDR has kind of changed now 
it doesn't quite make sense. Maybe it's because HDR is depth and dynamic range, so maybe that's what that's supposed to allude to, but otherwise you wouldn't know otherwise what that button is. And when you tap on it, now it has this circle with a square around it, and you can manually adjust brightness, things like that. Everything, this button is now completely solid circle, but down here the preview for the images is still square. Now for volume control, you have your volume over here on the left-hand side next to where your volume button is. You can manually increase, decrease, quickly mute. You can also change where media volume is outputted to the speaker or Bluetooth device. Over here, if you sw switch to a different volume setting, ring, vibrate, or silent, it has that little toggle up there. And then you also have your new UI for your power off, restart, and a screenshot. But overall, performance has been fantastic. Haven't had really any lags, haven't had any forced closes or any weird behaviors at that point. Um, I am using nap time from Franco Kerno, which has been using, which has been great. But something I do want to advise everyone, um, I was using a substratum theme for, with Andromeda on Oreo. I am completely stock unrooted uh, with the locked bootloader and I do want to let you know that I would highly highly advise to uninstall anything that you have before upgrading to Pi just because Pi is supposed to disable substratum support with overlays things like that so you may run into really big issues with force closes and things not working you might have to factory reset after that point but uninstall any sort of theme that you have with substratum before updating to Pi so you don't run into any issues. Something I really, really strongly stress that you guys do. Um, that is something that I actually had enabled before on my OnePlus 6. So keep that in mind and just better to be safe than sorry. We don't have any new wallpapers or anything like that. That's unfortunate, but no big deal. It usually doesn't happen. But call quality, everything has been running fine. Everything's smooth. Just I've been having weird um, gestures and just like this see here's a it's kind of like frozen in the recents and you can't interact with that anymore um, so i've had that happen from time to time where i've just gotten used to just swiping up and having to do it like this i don't really rely on swiping down here because uh, it's slow it lags a little bit and sometimes it locks up and sometimes even swiping f over between different apps like this is supposed to just quickly jump between your most recent apps, but it doesn't. Sometimes it switches two apps back. Um, so I've been having issues with the navigation, the, at least the Pi navigation pill down there. If you guys have any questions regarding Android Pi on the OnePlus 6, let me know down in the comments below. I am going to be doing some more videos here for the OnePlus 6 on how to unlock bootloader, flashing a kernel, checking out some custom ROMs, things like that. Um, if you guys are interested in picking up a OnePlus 6, I, there is a $20 coupon down below. You can use that on your checkout over at OnePlus. Thank you all for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care.